you're on a, you're the attitude. What do you mean when you say that we have a de facto patriarchate? And when do you expect that our patriarchal church will be crowned with the title of patriarch? Well, it's very important to explain what do we have and what we do not have yet. <laughs> so, first of all, we have all possibilities and uh, uh, all rights to live and act as a patriarchal church. Perhaps if tomorrow I'll receive a new title, a patriarch of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, what will change? I would uh, answer nothing. <laughs> There is small, small juridical procedure when a new patriarch is elected by the Senate that he doesn't need any, any uh, uh, confirmation from the Holy See. He all, all, uh, only that he need to express his communion with the successor of Peter. Right now, major archbishop has to be uh, uh, um, accepted by Rome has to receive an approval from, from the Holy See. But in other uh, uh, way of acting and existing, we have the same possibilities as a patriarchal church, patriarchal structure. When I will, I will uh, receive this honorifical title, I will see, <laughs> we'll try to, 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 to act as a patriarchal church, uh, which we de facto are, and maybe worldwide action of our church will demonstrate our dignity. Your gratitude. When you say that Ukraine is a missionary field, what do you actually mean by that? Well, uh, thank you for this question, because normally we use uh, the word mission if uh, we uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody who never heard about it. But Ukraine is a country is uh, 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 this society we, which has very profound Christian roots, more than millennium of Christianity in Ukraine. But unfortunately, because of different reasons, especially because of the, those uh, more than 70 years of the communism in Ukraine, uh, a large number of uh, Ukrainians uh, do not identify themselves with no one exists in churches in Ukraine. It's, so, it's our duty, it's our responsibility to preach the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ to them, to them. And also we have some, some Christians which uh, uh, are not practicing their faith. So it's also very important to perform so-called new evangelization to uh, 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 preach a gospel to Jesus Christ to those Christians who lost their faith. So, and when we speak about the missionary territory in Ukraine, uh, this is not a geographical territory. This is the, the territory of the human soul and heart. Okay, I understand. Uh, how is the Ukrainian Catholic Church developing itself in the eastern part of Ukraine and Crimea? What obstacles do you encounter? Is the Catholic Church viewed as the enemy of the people as in previous times? Well, thank you for that question. Because in the last Senate, we proclaimed that the strategic uh, uh, orientation or priority of the development of our church is our present and our work of evangelization in the center and the eastern Ukraine. So perhaps if anybody wants to help us, <laughs> So please help us to build churches on that territory. Uh, right now, the major uh, uh, problem that we encounter is difficulty to receive a land, a place where we can build our church. Right now, in many cities, we just have to uh, 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 perform our services in, in schools, in different halls, in libraries perhaps. And uh, for people who used to, to pray in temples, in churches, it's not, so not so easy to go to pray to the private apartment. And very often uh, from the Orthodox we will hear that we are a sect. Or perhaps uh, 
among the common sense on that part of Ukraine, being Christians means be an Orthodox. And very often, if you are not an Orthodox, some people would be suspicious, are you a Christian? <laughs> so, but uh, they, they, those are very practical uh, 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 difficulties. And I, I, I think that with a good priest and good uh, and vital, vibrant parishes, and also with the help of our brethren in the United States, we really can uh, uh, perform and uh, fulfill our mission to preach Jesus Christ to, the, to those people who never heard, never know him, especially in that part of Ukraine. Thank you. Do you consider the number of vocations to be satisfactory in Ukraine, or do we experience a drop in vocations? Well, uh, this is a very good question, because I am a former rector of the biggest and uh, most important seminary in Ukraine, and it's why the, the, uh, the whole issue of vocation, you know, it's, it's an issue of my uh, private interest. And I would say that, thanks be to God, we do have enough vocation for the priesthood. But we are lack of our resources in order to accept all those vocation and to give uh, for them a good formation. But what we really expect is a lack of vocation for the monastic and religious life. This year we, we had a special event in our church, uh, uh, the Patriarchal Sobor in Brazil. It's a, a, a church-wide assembly which unites bishop, priests, uh, uh, nuns, uh, 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 monks, and uh, uh, lay people, representative of all our approaches throughout the world. And the central topic of this gathering was a vocation for the religious life. And uh, we um, really realized that there is not enough vocation to this particular uh, 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 way of, of being Christians, and we have to encourage uh, uh, young generations especially in Ukraine, don't be afraid uh, uh, to join their religious communities uh, in our church. Statistics speak of 250,000 unborn children being aborted each year in Ukraine. Many are complaining that the population of Ukraine is dwindling down and at the same time, they conceal or ignore the fact that since the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, more than 7 million unborn children have been aborted. How is the church trying to stop this trend? Well, I have to make that statement that this is a shamed situation in Ukraine. Uh, we still uh, uh, receive that uh, uh, heritage from the Soviet Union, which according to the state law, it was allowed to perform uh, such, such an uh, operation. Uh, an abortion right now in Ukraine, uh, it's real plague of the Ukrainian society. And the uh, uh, Catholic Church, both Byzantine and Latin Rite, we, uh, we are trying to, to do everything that we can. First of all, we're trying to work with those who uh, have a power to change the legislation. We work with this health care system. And uh, perhaps uh, because of, of our pressure, the, uh, the uh, bioethics as an obligatory uh, uh, um, subject was introduced into the medical schools uh, of Ukraine. And also we work uh, in the pastoral way with those people who, who are preparing themselves for the marriage and with the young, young couples. So we're trying to, in different levels, preach the gospel of life. Thank you. The Ukrainian genocide of 1932-33 took the lives of 7 to 10 million Ukrainian farmers. However, the communists in Ukraine and many government officials uphold a different view or claim that we should hush down this information because of possible economic repercussions from Moscow. What is the position of the Ukrainian Catholic Church on the genocide of the Ukrainian people? First of all, we cannot uh, uh, commercialize the truth uh, even more 
this Ukrainian genocide is a real wound of the Ukrainian soul because uh, uh, this starvation hurts not only body but even the soul uh, and in order to heal our memory we have to remember we have to speak aloud and we have to protect new gener generation uh, from the similar events in the future thank you the catholic church in ukraine uh, excuse me the catholic church in the western world makes use of specialized orders to work with their youth how much attention does our catholic church in ukraine pay to the youth do we have the necessary orders like the Salesians, the Order of Don Bosco, to evangelize, activize, and organize them? Do they have chaplains in the Ukrainian armed forces? Well, it's a good question. First of all, the good news is that we do have Ukrainian Salesians in Ukraine. And uh, mostly they are present in uh, Lviv, in the western part of Ukraine, but right now they move toward Kiev, the center of our state and also also south they already bought uh, a land in order to uh, to build uh, oratories the uh, youth pastoral centers in the big cities uh, in ukraine but you know uh, we would never say that we have enough youth ministry in ukraine so it's why uh, i as a youngest ukrainian bishop i'm trying to to be uh, especially attentive and sensitive for the pe youth pastoral ministry. Uh, we have several youth movement, uh, movements in, in Ukraine, but I think that we have to vitalize our parishes, that in each parish we can uh, be welcome, we, we, will, we, we can welcome the uh, Ukrainian youth and to offer to them a special pastoral attention. What is the meaning and role of our church in the diaspora? What kind of relationship should there exist between the mother church in Ukraine and the sister churches? How can we help the mother church and what kind of help, if any, can we expect from her? Well, first of all, I would like to, to thank our church in diaspora, especially in the United States, for, for the 20 years helping us rebuild the church in Ukraine. I remember when I was a seminarian in the first 90s, uh, almost all our uh, 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 professors, our vice rector, came from the United States. <laughs> Perhaps Father uh, John Terlecki, uh, he's my vice rector. Uh, I'm really proud of him. <laughs> and he came from Stanford uh, Eparchy. Um, so I think our presence in different cultures in different countries is a will of god that we not only have to uh, 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 conserve our tradition not only uh, uh, be conservatives in the good sense of this of this uh, word but we also have to be able to well interpret it our in, uh, inheritance our treasure in order to be open to everybody who is willing to learn a little bit more about our church, who is willing to, to share our treasures. So our presence in different countries, I think it's a present not only for Ukrainians, but for everybody. So we want to be in open uh, communities. And I think the, the most important task for the uh, 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 relationship between the church in Ukraine and the church in diaspora is maintain the unity of the church. It's very important for everybody to not be closed and self-sufficient and to be able to create the church community worldwide. Your gratitude. I thank you for the interview and on behalf of our listeners Wish you immense success in your endeavors and may your efforts to expand the patriarchal structures of our church be crowned by the missing title of patriarch. Thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you. Yeah.